Well, hey there, fellow sojourners, and welcome back to another edition of Appropriate in the Culture. On the docket today, we discuss the war in Ukraine, because like you, I too have become a military geopolitical expert after successfully locating Ukraine on a map. I'm Pastor Shane, and I'll be your tactical advisor today as we appropriate some culture. As I'm sure you're aware by now, wannabe Bond villain Vladimir Putin has, without cause or justification, invaded the sovereign nation of Ukraine. It's a little complicated, and I don't want to get the details wrong, so let's just let the experts in the administration explain it. Those just joining us, we're talking to Vice President Kamala Harris, and uh, if you're watching any level of news, even social media, you're seeing everything that's going on right now in the Ukraine. Break it down in layman's terms for people who don't understand what's going on and how can this directly affect the people of the United States. So. Ukraine is a country in Europe. It exists next to another country called Russia. Russia is a bigger country. Russia is a powerful country. Russia decided to invade a smaller country called Ukraine. So basically, that's wrong. Mm -hmm. Slow down. Russia big. Okay. I think I got it. I'm an expert now. So here's my two cents, and it's about worth that much. I think the lead-up to the invasion was an unmitigated disaster. The arbitrary and capricious withdrawal from Afghanistan showed weakness and incompetence, as did the president's public pronouncements that maybe the reaction wouldn't be that tough if it wasn't, quote, a major incursion. Plus, the cancellation of the Keystone XL pipeline in conjunction with the green light for the Nord Stream 2 demonstrated that Europe and the U.S. were not serious about energy, and Europe in particular was beholden to Russian supply. However, since the invasion, I think the administration has done a fairly decent job. We have a united Western world inflicting economic pain with pretty serious sanctions on Russia. Simultaneously, we're supplying intel and weaponry to Ukraine, but not instituting a no-fly zone or escalating things militarily, and that seems pretty prudent to me. However, however, our energy policy is still cuckoo bananas. The president has finally ceased importing oil and natural gas from Russia, but the president is turning to places like Saudi Arabia and Venezuela to increase their production instead of increasing our oil production because climate change. Our oil is worse for the planet or something. That strikes me as really, really, what's the word I'm looking for? Gay! Gay. Gay. Gay? Gay. 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 I'm gonna say it. Gay. 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 I was going to say ill-advised, but okay. So that's my two cents and the end of the political punditry because this program is really focused on the culture. It's the C in ATC. And to that end, the war in Ukraine has unleashed a slew of cultural issues in the form of Russian backlash and wanton iconoclasm. For instance, the International Cat Federation has banned Russian cats from its international competitions, which frankly should have been done after the first doping incident. But the International Cat Federation is, believe it or not, kind of a joke organization. More seriously, a university in Italy attempted to ban the books of Dostoevsky and an elaborate ruse to not have to read Dostoevsky. Meanwhile, the Russian Ballet Theater has changed its name to RBT and are touting it as the world's first unbreakable code. Rotten butt tomatoes? Romance between turtles. The CIA is looking into it, but it's at least certain that the audience of dullards who enjoy ballet won't be able to crack it till the war in Ukraine is over. The producer of Robot Battle Testers stresses their multiculturalism and that, quote, we dance for peace, as do I. EA Sports banned Russian soccer teams from its FIFA sports game, but if you think that means they'll just have to be bored with the real thing, guess again. The International Federation of Association Football, which is a less respected organization than the International Cat Federation, has also banned Russia from participation. Russian vodka has been dumped and banned in parts of the United States of America. Ohio Governor Mark DeWine tweeted, 
Ohio Liquor estimates that there are approximately 6,400 bottles of vodka made by Russian Standard currently for sale in Ohio's 487 liquor agencies across the state. Retailers have been asked to immediately pull Green Mark Vodka and Russian Standard Vodka from their shelves. When asked to comment about the protest, Putin sipped on some vodka, stroked his Russian cat, and said, Tostoy, Dostoevsky, RBT, which roughly translated means, pretty sure you already paid for the vodka, though. Don't do impressions. Russian chess player Alexander Grishkov has been kicked out of a forthcoming tournament in Norway. Didn't see that move coming, did ya? And why should he? After all, it's not like Norway refused to participate in the Olympics, and China has done far worse things than play chess. And speaking of the Olympics, the Paralympics will deny access to athletes from Russia. Take that, crippled people. And of course, all over the world and all over the country, people are proudly displaying the colors of the Ukrainian flag. And speaking of flags, Appropriate in the Culture is brought to us today by the non-binary pride flag t-shirts. Available in men or women options. Now look, these protests, demonstrations, and sanctions range from necessary and important to buffoonish and counterproductive. Banning Dostoevsky, who by the way spent four years in a Siberian prison camp, is basically just punching yourself in the face. Pouring out Russian vodka might make you feel good, and perhaps as an expression of solidarity with Ukraine, it can be a fine symbolic demonstration, but it's not more than that. And the danger of a frenzy of anti-Russian sentiment is that we may fail to make the proper distinctions between Putin, the Russian people, and general Russian culture. Even the sanctions, which are preferred to all-out war, are an imprecise tool in inflicting harm. It's not a targeted missile, it's a carpet bomb. Crippling the Russian economy doesn't simply hurt Putin and the Russian leadership. It hurts, and more so, the everyday Russian people who are neither responsible nor even necessarily supportive of the war efforts in Ukraine. And as Christians, we need to make sure that people don't get lost in politics. Remember this account in Luke. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? And Jesus tells him the familiar story of the good Russian and says, go and do likewise. Loving God, loving our neighbors is the essence of the Christian life. However, that doesn't mean that these sanctions are morally wrong or unjustifiable for Christians to support. It seems to me to be a quite measured response to the destruction and death that is being unleashed on Ukraine to enact tough sanctions. And God in Scripture does use nations as part of his judgment to punish sin and evil. He uses the nation of Israel to punish the Canaanites. It is not because of your righteousness or your integrity that you are going in to take possession of their land, but on account of the wickedness of these nations, the Lord your God will drive them out before you to accomplish what he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And God uses other nations like Assyria to punish Israel. The king of Assyria deported Israel to Assyria and settled them in Hala and Gozan on the Habor River and in towns of the Medes. This happened because they had not obeyed the Lord their God, but had violated his covenant, all that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded. They neither listened to the commands nor carried them out. And as a result, Israelite cats were banned from the International Cat Federation. Furthermore, as it says in Romans, For the one in authority is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for rulers do not bear the sword for no reason. They are God's servants, agents of wrath to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. Those in authority are servants of God, agents of wrath to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. That mostly applies to citizens, but it certainly can apply to the wrongdoing of other nations. And Russia has certainly been acting badly. In that way, sanctions are biblically justified, as are some of the other restrictions. Kicking Russia out of the World Cup is reasonable to me, as sports are often a means of proxy wars and are a huge source of nationalistic pride. Same thing for the Olympics, though I wish it were exercised during the regular Olympics. But the further and further out we go, directing our ire toward more and more tangentially connected targets, we fall into iconoclasm with disturbing results like this, or a Russian community center in Vancouver was vandalized. That's not loving your neighbor well. We need to be able to make distinctions between Putin, the oligarchs, the Russian people, individual Russian people, and the broader Russian culture. So go ahead, curl up with crime and punishment, take a sip of vodka, 
no, don't do that. No, wrong. Uh, but, but pet Russian cats, listen to Tchaikovsky and pray for Putin, pray for our leaders, pray for our world leaders and the Russian and Ukrainian people. That's it for today. As always, if you like what we're doing here, you can follow me on my author's Facebook page. Some exciting things are coming there, I promise you. You can also find me on Twitter, Locals. Be sure to like, subscribe, share, sharing is caring, leave a comment or a question, and I'll see you next week for more Appropriate in the Culture. Mm -hmm.